Hey everybody, yes, we're here again. It's Bob Lorenz and Paul O'Neill with you today doing our best at social distancing. We're several states away or beyond, Paul. Hey, I wanted to talk to you about experiences. Everybody has these defining experiences in their lives, some big, some little. And everybody Yankees fan knows, we'll get to your baseball career in a minute, you like to eat. It's close to your heart. <laughs> Food is close to your gut as well. I mean that in a good way. You don't really have a gut. But anyway, let's talk about your tastiest or biggest go-to ballpark foods. What do you got? You know, looking back at when I was playing, um, some of the spreads were the same in every city. Uh, I was a big Mexican guy, so going down to Texas and Arlington, they always had a great spread of pure Tex-Mex food. Um, believe it or not, the last day in Boston was always good. We had Boston cream pie, oh, yeah. lobster tails. The only thing about Boston <laughs> was the locker room was so small yeah. that there's nothing like you know, enjoying a lobster tail and some Boston cream pie with some hairy dude in a towel walking right by you, you know? <laughs> it, just, it, it didn't go together, but yeah. those two uh, come to mind. It's like when you go to a party and there's no place to put your drink and your food and you're trying to eat and it's just this small area, right? So, all right, so ballpark food you've covered. And, you know, I'm thinking, like, I have to have a hot dog when I go, though. And I know you eat right and take care of your body. Are you a hot dog at the ballpark kind of guy or no? Uh, I, I think I was when I was little. Uh, yeah. The one thing I never understood was cotton candy. It looks so good, but it's horrible. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. It just it looks good. It's blue. It's pink. It looks great on kids' lips. Yep. It's just no good. Ice cream, huge fan. Pretzels, yeah. huge fan. Pizza in our booth, the biggest fan of all time. All right. You're sending Nev out to get ice cream. What flavor are you asking for? Uh, I, I'm pretty basic. It's either vanilla or just mint chocolate chip. You know, I actually may have misspoke. Maybe she sends you out to get ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of chores now. I vacuum. I do all kinds of stuff. Believe me. Yeah. Uh, um, I didn't know so many things went on in life. It, this would be a great time for you to visit our house. It is spotless. Really? Now yeah, because we do nothing but housework all day. <laughs> I can imagine your to-do list today. All right, so let's keep it with food. But what is the weirdest food you've ever eaten? When I was young, I had frog legs. It's the only time I tried frog legs. No, I no. had frog legs. I, you know, we used to, when we went to Milwaukee back in the old days as the American League team, yeah. and Bob Whitman was part of the team, he would bring in like, you know, jerky, of bratwurst jerky and deer jerky, stuff yeah. like that. I, I just, I never got it. I tried it, acted like I like it, but wasn't a big fan. All right, move on to experiences about you in baseball. Experience. First time ever walking into a major league clubhouse. What was going through your head? Yeah, I um, remember being called up my first year in, in, in 85 and uh, was greeted by Pete Rose, who was the manager at the time. And he told me, uh, you know, we, you had a great year. We are in a pennant run. You're probably not going to get much playing time. So sit, learn, enjoy. And so I, I did everything until day one. We went into extra innings, and he told me to grab a bat. Let's go. It's time for you to pinch hit. So uh, uh, he kind of, like, welcomed me, relaxed me, and yeah. then three hours later told me to grab a bat. You're ahead. <laughs> Love it. Now, it's different walking into an all-star clubhouse because it's not all guys you know. It's not your buddies, but it is your peers. It is guys you obviously have a lot of respect for. How are you in an all-star clubhouse? I'm guessing yeah, you that's walk first in like, one. It's, everybody, it's Paul O'Neill. It's, it's, it's <laughs> funny. You do kind of peek around. And it, it's funny because the first one you go to, you are kind of starstruck because there's some guys you look around. And at the time, my first all-star game, um, I look back, it was in Toronto and, and Cal Ripken Jr. and Andre Dawson and, and guys that are there every single year. It's just another day. But, you know, as a young kid that makes it for the first time, you do kind of look around and, yeah. and see, uh, you know, what the stars do. Now, part of those all-star experiences, everybody signs for each other, jerseys, balls, that kind of thing. Is there anybody you ever kind of were intimidated by? Like, I really, really would love his autographer to meet him, but I'm a little nervous meeting him. Not, I mean, not players-wise that you were playing with at the time. Um, uh, you know, Joe DiMaggio was the one guy that, I wanted it autograph, and I did send the Bat Boy up. And the first time I sent him up, Mr. DiMaggio said, hey, I'm not signing today. And I'm like, 
look, I'm glad I didn't ask. I didn't look like yeah. a fool. Right? <laughs> but the next year, he walked over to my locker and said, kid, you still want that autograph? And I, wow. I couldn't grab a bat fast <laughs> enough. And to this day, I still have that bat. I had one Joe D moment. I was covering the All-Star game in San Diego years ago. And they were doing – they played an actual, like, old-timers game then. Uh -huh. And I was standing there just watching it as a member of the media. And I turned to my right, and Joe D was standing there. Typical Joe D, full suit. I was going to say, did he have the like suit and tie on? Yeah. And that was one of those, like, whoa moments, you know. It's Joe D. It's not just anybody. You know what? When I was traded over, I had those moments. The first time I took the field, I walked out. And, you know, you see Whitey Ford. You see Joe DiMaggio. You see Reggie Jackson. Uh, Yogi Berra and, and they, they just these iconic names all of a sudden you knew them as people and I think that's one of the best things that the Yankees do is still bring back some of the old guy I mean Mickey Mantle I mean to, just to see that smile I mean you see yeah. a picture but to see it in life um, those are times that you, you don't forget all right so how is old timers day glad you said that changed for you like from the first time you went to now where we've got a mic and an earpiece <laughs> on you and you're running around and Hoping you get a groove fastball. <laughs> you know, the first the first time I played, I thought, you know what, I'm hitting third or fourth. I'm one of the best. I don't even know if I can make the lineup anymore. I usually <laughs> heard something coming after it. So uh, I'm much more at home in the old timers day now than than I was when I was younger. Believe me. But there's there's a problem here because it seems like over the past couple of years, David Cohn has been, I don't want to say dodging you, but intentionally sending up sort of pitching assassins to get you out. Like, I think Nelly, all of a sudden, you think you're getting a pitch from your Yes Network colleague in David Cohn. Oh, there's Jeff Nelson throwing heat at you. Yeah, it's, it's not right. I figure I'm hitting second or third in the lineup. We get, I, get the, I, I get the starter, right? Last year, they brought in Mariano, who about broke my thumb with his cutter. He told me yeah. he laid right in there for me. I mean, then, yeah, you had Nelly. They brought in Graham Lloyd. You know, Coney is the ideal guy you want in, right. in the old-timers day. I mean, he can't break a pane of glass now. He puts it right there for you. <laughs> and uh, he doesn't have an ego where other guys, I think, are still trying to get you out. Uh, that, will, that is a quote that will live forever about Coney, by the way, in his pitching. We can't break a pane of glass now. <laughs> He's going to love that, by the way. So let's shift gears a little bit. We talked about kind of – the, the excitement or experience of going into a clubhouse. You went into a very different clubhouse in 1995. You taped an episode of Seinfeld. And I'm wondering, were you nervous doing that? Because I hope people look it up on YouTube, just put in Paul O'Neill, Seinfeld. It's there, and you looked like a natural. How did you do uh, it? You know, it was funny because I didn't, at the time, believe it or not, I didn't know a lot about the show and had kind of uh, said no the first time and then, was, you know, kind of reintroduced to the idea. My parents were huge fans of the show. And I remember going, being picked up. We had a game in Anaheim that night. We were playing um, the Angels at the time. So got picked up, went to uh, the set, was in there putting makeup on. And Kramer comes in and introduces himself to, you know, Mr. Yeah. Neil, Mr. And I'm thinking, <laughs> is this guy in character or is this the way he really is? And, you know, he basically was the really was. So um, it was a neat thing. I couldn't remember. I, I couldn't wait to, to the off season uh, to when that episode was aired. And yeah. uh, to this day, I still get my check from the Screen Actors Guild for, I don't know, 50 bucks or something. Yeah, when that's played. So, Let's put but, that away. Uh, like I said, day. the one thing I do remember was uh, uh, Kramer, I don't know if, he has to do much for his character. That's basically just who he is. Right, right. Very frenetic, no doubt. Hey, so some people might not know you're a music guy, too. What's the best concert you've been to and why? Best experience at a concert? Well, the most fun concert I ever went to was on a New Year's Eve. And it was a, a Mellencamp concert in Indiana. And we went, and there was a break between like 11 or 12 and then he came back in and during that break we were fortunate enough to go back and he came over and he said you're playing the encore I said I'm playing the encore I said yeah he's like no you're playing the encore so I actually got to go up play with the band wow. for a couple songs and as I was playing I felt like I can't hear my snare drum there's something <laughs> wrong here and I looked down my one and only shot my stick was broken <laughs> and so I'm looking around, looking around, and I see the stick bag, and I get my stick, and I'm back at it now. I was grooving. But and how that's long did probably you the one time that 
Uh, I was a little overmatched, but looking back, one of the most fun times of my life. How long would you say you were playing with the broken stick? Just curious. Uh, I got the, we played Gloria. Remember the old classic yeah, yeah, Gloria? Yeah, sure. I was probably in the middle of the song when I figured <laughs> out, uh, you know what, this doesn't sound good. I don't have a good pop on my snare. But once I got a full stick in hand, yeah. I was going. All right, so let's talk about a couple other things before we wrap it. Most scared or scary experience you've ever had? I can tell you probably for me thinking about it, I like roller coasters, but I was on one at I believe it was Six Flags in Massachusetts, and it's one of the ones that starts by going up, 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 and I hate looking up into the sky like that. I need perspective of the ground. <laughs> but on the left, it was a river. So I'm just thinking, if this thing plummets, we're just falling into the water. So that was one of those, like, I just told my daughter, I'm like, I'm just looking I at am, it. I'm going to top this just because it's so recent in my mind. Yeah. As I'm doing my vacuuming, two days ago, <laughs> two days ago, right, I have my ear pods in, and I hear my wife screaming. So I think she broke something, or something really bad happened. So I throw down the stuff, I go running in, and all of a sudden I stop an iguana. You know what an iguana is? Sure, yeah had run in through the front door, <laughs> five feet long. It looked like a mini miniature dinosaur. Yeah, yeah. And she's screaming. It scared me. I'm screaming. <laughs> I'm firing towels, blankets, everything. So I tell you what, it ended up, we, we lassoed it. We got it out, got it outside. But I'm telling you, you run out of your bedroom and you see a little dinosaur looking at you, yeah. it catches your attention. Wait a minute. How did you grab it? How did you lasso it? How did you I went and grabbed every towel I had in the bathroom and just fired it on top of it, hoping wow. that the thing knew that yeah. I was going to try to be a friend and get him back outside. Yeah. But talk about just a prehistoric looking thing. When you run out of the bedroom, it's like that thing's not supposed to be there. Was it like squirming around and stuff while you were carrying I, it out? I think, it's, I think my wife's shrill screams put it in <laughs> shock. Put, put it into a state of shock. Oh, my what, God. It was catatonic. <laughs> <laughs> Only in Florida do you pull in your Amazon box because you have everything delivered, and then the iguana runs in the house, right? <laughs> All right, so obviously when we put this up, and I, I tweet about it later, it's just going to say, wait for the iguana. That's what my headline is going to be <laughs> if, when we do I will post a picture of this beauty. It's, <laughs> it's not a little tiny lizard now. Yeah, oh, no. I'm telling you what. Yeah, yeah, it's please do. T T-Rex. Bring, bring, bring the terror <laughs> to every one of our <laughs> listeners and viewers. Paul, great stuff. I want to remind our viewers, keep doing what you're doing in terms of self-quarantining, um, social distancing, et cetera. You can always send us emails uh, at Yes Network, not emails, but at Yes Network, hashtag it, Yes Mailbag. And then how about this, Paul? You'll be part of a show we're doing tonight at 7 o'clock on Yes, right after the Michael K. Show, a compilation of the Yes, We're Here like we're doing right now. So we're trying to hit as many viewers as possible and keep them engaged. You know what? If that's a highlight show, Bob, you and I might not be on it much. I'm just... <laughs> Just throwing that hey, out there. Wait, hey, what? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Paul, good seeing you. Talk to you soon. All right, hope you're well.